We resume our discussion about antihypertensive medications. We're talking about direct vasodilators. In the previous video, we've talked about hydralazine, which can cause coronary steel syndrome, and nitroprusside, which can lead to cyanide poisoning. Today, we'll talk about minoxidil and diazoxide, the potassium channel openers. By the way, diazoxide can do something else. Since it opens potassium channels, not only in the blood vessels, it can also open potassium channels in the pancreas. And when you open potassium channel in the pancreas, this can decrease insulin release which is very bad if you have diabetes but it's very good if you have an insulinoma anti-hypertensive drugs empatholytics direct vasodilator calcium channel blockers and ren engines all those remodulators we are talking about these guys hydralazine and nitroprusside were pro drugs of nitric oxide minoxidil and diazoxide are potassium channel openers all of them are direct vasodilators there is no autonomic nervous system pharmacology they do not block the beta receptor therefore you can suffer from reflux tachycardia what's the solution add a beta blocker since they dilate your vessels so you can lead to edema what's the solution add a diuretic when you open the atp dependent potassium channels in the smooth muscles of the vessel this will lead to hyperpolarization hyperpolarization means inactivation equals relaxation so the vessel will dilate which will lower your blood pressure and this is the mechanism of action of minoxidil and diazoxide they open the atp dependent potassium channel this is different from the mechanism of action of the nitric oxide pro drugs hydralazine nitroprusside and nitrate all of these five drugs dilate your vessels period end of story Minoxidil, mechanism of action, ATP-dependent potassium channel opener at the vascular smooth muscles, which will lead to hyperpolarization, which means relaxation, vasodilation, hypotension. It's like a music to my ears. Hyperpolarization, relaxation, vasodilation, hypotension. Uses, hypertension, especially refractory hypertension. Side effect, it's notorious for causing hypertrichosis, which means like, like you see this guy, hair everywhere, hair, 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 hair. hair. Reflex tachycardia, add a beta blocker, edema, add a diuretic. Here is a fun fact about minoxidil. Minoxidil has a side effect of causing hypertrichosis. And this side effect has been exploited to produce some drugs known as the topical treatment for boldness, the topical minoxidil called Rogaine. This is very dishonest because this is, a, is like a side effect of a drug and using, you're using the side effect to actually like treat another disease. Okay, I don't know. Minoxidil and diazoxide are ATP-dependent potassium channel openers at the vascular smooth muscles leading to vasodilation and lowering the blood pressure. But if they open the potassium channel here, they will also open the potassium channels there. And the beta cells of the pancreas lead to decreased insulin release. That's why diazoxide can be used to manage insulinoma. And here is an example of a drug that can treat hypertension and treat insulinoma. If you remember my discussion about thiazide, I've told you that thiazides open the potassium channel in the vessels leading to vasodilation and in the pancreas decreasing the insulin release and this was ATP dependent, if you remember. Here is the beta cell of your pancreas. If you would like to secrete insulin, you need to close the potassium channel. But if you give a potassium channel opener such as minoxidil, diazoxide and even thiazide diuretics, Potassium will not stay in, potassium will leave, calcium will not enter, calcium will stay outside. No one will rupture the vesicle, no one will secrete the insulin, which is very bad for you if you have a diabetes, but it's very good for you if you suffer from an insulinoma. It depends on the situation. And this puts the direct vasodilators in the books. Thank you for watching. See ya!